It is 2020 after all, and we all know that we really need to be saying no to fast fashion and making our clothes last longer, no matter what condition they're in. Because I know when I first started to mend clothing, it's really hard. I mean, why is mending so hard? There is no instruction manual. There, every mend, every repair that you have to do is different. So how do you know what you're supposed to do? Like what technique are you supposed to use to mend that particular whatever you have in front of you with? That is the question that I want to look at today. I want to make this really simple and sort of break it down. This isn't a how to mend, but a how to know what to do to mend kind of video. So let's break it down and talk about what is darning, what is patching, what is this fabulous visible mending that you keep hearing and seeing about, and just what you, like four ways to look at your mending so you know what to do to assess and know what sewing techniques to use on your mending. Welcome back my lovely ladies and gents to another video. Thank you. I love seeing all your smiling faces here today. Well, all right, I'm imagining your smiling faces anyway. So mending is the topic on hand. Now, perhaps there are some of you that don't follow me on Instagram, though I think you should because uh, that's where all the little behind the scenes sneaky peeks go on. So over on Instagram, I do something that is called hashtag Monday Mending. And in my world, there's a lot of mending that goes on, particularly on Mondays. One of the questions that comes up a lot is, you know, mending is really hard. How do you know what to do? That's where this comes from. So what is Monday Mending? Well, let me explain. I started a Monday Mending maybe a year and a half ago. I found that my mending pile just kept growing and growing and growing and I just kept filling it with clothing that needed fixing, but I just never got around to actually doing it because, well, isn't there always more fun sewing jobs to do before the mending jobs? But that is not the point. The mending needs to get done. We want to be more sustainable, at least I want to be more sustainable and make my clothes last longer. So I really wanted to get the mending done. So I decided that it was going to be best for me to pick a one day of the week to just pick at least one item of mending and just get it done. So Monday kind of rhymes, so I just chose Monday. And I put it publicly on Instagram so that I kept myself accountable to actually get it done. And I did. My mending pile shrunk and now I just uh, do it to maintain and it prompts me to keep on fixing the things that I need to do. And you all love doing it so much. It has really caught on and it is amazing to see all of your mending every Monday. It is fantastic. Of course you can join. Uh, I'm going to talk more about that at the end. But for now, let's get in and start talking about how you can sort of assess your mending when you're starting to do this. You've got a, a broken piece of clothing in front of you. What are the main things that you're doing as a starter to kind of get yourself so you know what to look for in your mending? Okay, the first one is you'll be reworking what's already come undone. So this one's quite simple and easy. So you might have a button that's come off, you might have a popped seam, maybe a hem's come down. So you just need to rework what has come undone. So this is really simple. Like you'll just be restitching on the button, restitching the hem, restitching the things you know that are coming undone. So it's kind of obvious what you need to do on this one, right? Okay, let's keep on. The second one is darning. So you might have heard this term quite a bit and wondering just what is darning to begin with, right? So I would say it's something that you see a lot of in vintage sewing books because it is a, let's call it an old fashioned skill when once upon a time we used to mend as common practice, but you and I are bringing this back into common practice nowadays. Darning is basically you would get threads and you kind of re-weave in the fabric. So you sort of weave in, uh, just using a, a very basic running stitch, you sort of weave in and out, in and out this way over your tear. So you don't want missing fabric, but just if you've got a tear, a little like pull, and you would darn. 
So you go up and down, up and down this way, and then up and down, up and down this way, and you sort of cross over and you actually fill in uh, and sort of reweave in the fabric construction, if you will, to cover the hole and mend that area. So you're reinforcing it with all of those running stitches. And if you're really, really, really good, that's when you can do invisible mending. You can actually even use threads from the garment that you're making, so it's really invisible. But darning is mostly done on knitwear. It does work the best because knits kind of pull in very easily and it looks really nice and neat. It's quite often done on socks and stockings, and as I said, knitwear can be done on wovens as well. On wovens these days, you mostly find that it's used in a visible manner, and we'll get to that in a later tip. And so there's different, uh, you can use darning eggs, darning mushrooms to help aid you in this. So your darning mushroom is used that you put your cloth on top and it gives you a, a surface that you can use your needle and you can go up and down, up and down with your needle on your little egg or mushroom and it, and it makes that job of going up and down much, much easier. So that's what they are used for. And that's the basic principle of darning. So you will use a darning technique on small little holes and tucks on knitwear particular. Um, there are different, different ways because these often you'll use a bit of darning, a bit of this, a bit of this all together. So let's move on. The next one is patching. So patching is where you actually have missing fabric. So you have a big hole in your garment that's missing fabric and you need to fill in that hole. That is where you'll use a patch. So you'll use a matching fabric or perhaps a contrast fabric and really uh, bring it out loud to use some, some fabric and you'll either back it from behind or back it on top. There's many different methods and we're not going into that today, but you'll use the extra fabric to patch it on. So you can simply uh, round your hole, you can sort of zigzag all around it to secure it. You can darn in the new fabric on top. So that's where you can combine these two methods together. Uh, so there's many different, as I said, ways of using the patching method, but you will patch when you have missing fabric that you need to fill in the gaps. And there's many ways that you can uh, actually sew that patching on. So you could, as I said, decorate it or not. And that leads into my last thing that you generally think about in mending. And that is the visible factor. So these days, I feel like mending, visible mending is, it's just the decorative nature of mending. So these days, I feel like uh, visible mending is kind of like a stamp against fast fashion. Having your mending visible and you're sort of saying to the world, yes, I mend my clothes, this is what I do. You can't, like, I feel like people sort of use it as a bit of a, a statement to say that they mend their clothes rather than throw them away and they're anti-fast fashion. It's kind of like a stamp against fast fashion. That's how I sort of feel it. But the decorative nature is what you also need to consider. So when you're looking and assessing, do you would think, do you want it to be invisible? Uh, is it, you know, a beautiful evening gown that you want to try and make it as discreet as possible? Or are you going to just go for it and turn it into something decorative? So you could use decorative darning stitches, for example. You might have heard of the uh, Boro or Shishko, I'm going to muck that name up. That's the sort of darning stitches, that's just running stitches. They're done in a very decorative way. Uh, we're often not as fine a seamstresses as we once were, uh, and we're tiny, teeny little stitches tend to be quite tedious for our modern eyes and selves, so bigger, more visible stitches are, are a bit easier to do, particularly when you're learning as well. So uh, I quite like to do visible darning stitches, and I've done a few projects. Uh, I actually have a video that you can watch here where I demonstrated some of that, and uh, if you want to see an example of some uh, visible mending done in a decorative way, go watch that video as well. After this one, of course. But you might also uh, want to embroider like a little flower or something decorative over the top of your hole or turn your patch. You might want to decorate it and do very fancy, beautiful decorative stitches on top of that hole there, the patching that you did. So. I think you can start to see how these uh, four sort of things all start to come together. So have a think about it. When you've got your, uh, oops, when you've got your damaged garment in front of you, you need to think, 
Do I need to rework what has come undone? Is it just a popped seam that needs re-sewing? Is it a button that's come off? Is it something like functional that just needs to be re-stitched up? If you've got a hole in your garment of sorts, then you'll think, am I going to darn it or am I going to patch it? Or am I going to obviously do a combination of those? Are you missing fabric? Do you need to actually put a patch there or can you just darn it up together? And then you need to consider the visibility or the decorative nature of what you're doing. So think, do you want it to be discreet or decorative in nature? And then you can go from there and have your plan of attack. Basically, you'll know if you're going to do a patch with some decorative darning stitches, for example, you know that and you know your plan of attack on how you're going to actually then mend your item and make that clothes, make your all of your clothes last a little bit longer, but this one in particular. I think being able to uh, assess and have this kind of knowledge behind you, even just a little bit, gives you more confidence to actually go ahead and start mending those clothes and not be afraid. Just don't be afraid. It's only fabric. So, you know, if you muck it up, it doesn't matter. You've learned how to do it better for the next time that you do it. Now, if you do want to actually learn more about how to darn, how to patch, uh, and all those kinds of things. This is the sort of how to uh, definitely tutorials that I have at vintagesewingschool.com. So do go there and uh, consider joining us. It's, it's a monthly sewing club kind of thing where we have monthly lessons all about these topics to really help you grow your skills and take your sewing to the next level. I would love to have you in class. And for more inspiration then you know what to do with, go onto Instagram and have a look at the hashtag Monday Mending. Look it up because there you will see all of the wonderful Monday menders there posting their mending every Monday and getting it done and say no to fast fashion. There is so much amazing, amazing mending jobs there. You will be absolutely spoilt for inspiration on what to, you can do, what is actually possible. So do, if you want to join us for Monday Mending, please do. All you have to do is every Monday, go to your big mount mend pile is what we call it, and just pick at least one item and just get it done. To keep yourself accountable, go onto Instagram and on my post on Mondays, write it down what you're going to mend. Tell me about it, so keep yourself accountable. And of course, post your pictures. Use the hashtag Monday Mending and tag me, Evelyn double underscore, so two of them, underscores, would, and so I can see them and repost your mending as well. I love to see them all so much. What was your biggest takeaway from this video? Tell me down in the comments below. I love hearing them. And if you have any other questions about mending in anything, let me know those of course as well, because you never know, I might just make a video about it in the future. So thank you so much for watching. Remember, do like this video if you like it. And of course, share it out with your friends if uh, they need some mending help as well. And well, until next time, happy sewing. Bye.